Welcome back, class, to the true and accurate history of the Iroquois League. As we open our new chapter of history, the great General Cao Cao is born in Onondaga. He was a warrior who had taken part in the battles down at Washington. While they had not been successful, he was the most distinguished warrior, and so was elevated to the rank of general, a rank which had heretofore not existed among the Iroquois people, but one which they increasingly saw as needful with the encroaching white snakes and the people of Siam and the British, and not to mention the warlike Aztec, all having made their way to the shores of the great land. The great prophet Tekanawide declared that there would be a reckoning that came, a time of great treachery, for they had seen through the deception of the white snakes in the beginning but their attempts to protect themselves from the ill effects of their inevitable deception were unsuccessful. The white snakes still lived, and the red snakes stood at their borders, watching and waiting. The Aztec, led by Montezuma, and the people of Siam, were not so peaceful-minded as the Iroquois. They saw the encroachment of the white snakes of Britain as a great insult to their own sovereignty and began to seek alliances with Hiawatha and Dekanawide, asking for them to take part in their battles planned against the Americans or the British. Well, the Americans had been very successful in convincing the Aztec and the Siamese that the British were evil and that they, the Americans, were fighters of freedom and peace who had no desire to take over the lands claimed by the Siamese and Aztec. They were a very convincing people and the goods they brought from across the Great Lake, across the endless waters, were very tempting. The Iroquois, however, refused to trade with Washington and his people which led to growing unpopularity of the Iroquois people all around the land. Hiawatha and Dekanawide had never sought to become emperors. The Iroquois people were not built to be an empire. They were not expansionists. They were simply content to live on and with the land as they had their entire lives. Their alliance was one of convenience, one of politics, one of progress not one of war, not one of expansion. They never sought to build a kingdom or an empire or a great nation. They simply sought to live and to exist and to enjoy the land. But they saw now that the lands which they had once run through and hunted and lived in in peace were being claimed as to be owned by the people of the new empires which had appeared on their shores. The Aztec and Siamese gave the Iroquois one more chance to join them in their war against the Red Snakes, the British. But the Iroquois had no desire to engage in a war which had no bearing on them. They were too busy trying to grow their civilization, trying to become better people. This would prove unfortunate in the long run for them. It was a bad choice. Dekanawide's prophecy that a great time of reckoning and violence was coming would turn out to be true. It was a good thing that they had refused to join the Aztec in their war. A good thing that they had turned down the Siamese. For if the Iroquois had joined in and attacked the British and come under assault from the British, they would have been greatly weakened which would have left them in a very bad position for what was to come. The triremes continued to explore all around the coast of the world to learn about the borders, the lands, and where the barbarians lived, and where the newcomers lived as well. The brave scouts on the far side of the world had no way to get home. Hiawatha was forced to create a treaty with the British in order to get them through. This perhaps was the last straw in the eyes of the Aztec and the Americans, not to mention the Siamese. 
Preparations began, though it would be some time before they came to fruition. In the meantime, exploration and development continued. It became increasingly clear to Hiawatha that in order to remain a viable power, in order to retain their sovereignty, the Iroquois League would have to begin settling more and more cities across the world. And while this was alien to them, as they were not fans of cities, it seemed unavoidable. And so they began sending their people to create settlements at strategic points across the continent. Places where they had always found lush farmland, or great migrating herds, or unusual and therefore wholly natural formations. Archimedes was also born in this time, and built a great workshop to the south of Onondaga, which would speed the progress of the Iroquois League's technological development. Spearmen set out to patrol the areas which the Iroquois planned to develop and to protect their cities. The people were happy in this time. Roads were built connecting the two great cities of the Iroquois League, and a third city was soon to be completed. Technology was increasing all the time. New ways of using materials long part of the earth were discovered, and this was an exciting time for the Iroquois. Oswininka and Onondaga growing at a great rate, farmland being cultivated more than ever before, and the barbarians being cleared away by the combination of Tao Tao and the great spearmen of the Iroquois League, they seemed a hopeful time. The empires were all fighting amongst themselves, so it seemed that the Iroquois might be able to simply ride out the tide of history and then regain their peaceful land once the empires had finished killing themselves off. After all, had not Dekanawide said that the white snakes and the red snakes would fight? Would do great battle? Would have an incredible war? It seemed only logical then. All they had to do was wait, build their new cities, and drive off the barbarians, or bring them into their own civilization. If they did that, then they would be free. All they had to do was be patient, and the Great Spirit would provide. Settlers spread east first, and then west, aiming to secure both coasts, aiming to find the natural wonders and settle near them, claim them as their own. Montezuma saw that they were spreading and was not pleased. He accused them of warmongering, of all things, which, of course, Hiawatha and Dekanawide hotly denied. All they were doing was protecting what has always been theirs. The Iroquois continued to grow their armies, though at a slower rate than they had before. More and more technologies and buildings were available to create, and so less time was spent on creating people and units of war. This turned out to be a bad decision, as the Americans and the Aztec both declared war on them, having forged a secret alliance behind their back in their struggle against the British. Hiawatha and Dekanawide were taken by surprise, though they should not have been, given Dekanawide's earlier prophecy. This was the treachery. This was the time of reckoning. This was the great war which would come to claim them. It was time to begin shoring up the defenses. It was time to begin thinking, planning, finding ways, as Aquisesame was founded to protect the Great Barrier Reef. Ways to protect their land, ways to protect their nation and their culture, and ways to protect themselves from the Aztec and the American invaders. It was time to go to war. They began building walls around their settlements, sending soldiers out to cross the lands between Onondaga and the Grand River settlement. 
aiming to create a path that workers and soldiers could move on through easily in order to more swiftly reach one end of the Empire or another. Defense was required, and defense was created. Soldiers battled bravely at Grand River, where the first battles of the war took place. A great invasion on all fronts by the Aztec was the first strike against the Iroquois, but they stood strong at Grand River, repelling the invaders as well as they could. More settlers headed towards the southeast around the Great Lake in the middle of the continent, hoping to form one more nation, one more settlement, protect one more bit of natural resources from the predators who were stripping the land of everything that it had. Belgrade proved a contentious battleground. Soldiers aiming to get to Grand River were waylaid by the troops of Belgrade, who were allied with the Americans and the Aztec. And so it was decided that Belgrade needed to be taken care of. This was a loathsome move in the eyes of Dekanawi Day, but Hiawatha convinced him that the violent reprisal against Belgrade was necessary. After all, it would also give them access to the resources which Belgrade was hoarding, and it would create a stronger path between Onondaga and Grand River, the front of the war. So it was that Dekanawi Day agreed, and the Iroquois League went to war with Belgrade aiming to invade the city and make it their own. This was more difficult than anticipated, as the people of Belgrade were well-organized and well-armed, almost more so than the people of the Iroquois, who were not warlike in nature. The workers from Grand River began building frantically, creating a road towards Belgrade to cut the transit time of the soldiers as much as possible. The road is also being created down to Buffalo Creek in the south, and Aquisesame in the west. Grand River continued to defend its borders from the Aztec, with sea power, which it had in abundance, more so than any other nation. This was Hiawatha's greatest advantage in the war. The triremes were a powerful advantage. The spearmen were good for defense, but were proving ineffectual in taking Belgrade. Even so, the triremes went out, bombarding the enemy troops, trying to open a path so that the spearmen could carve their way into Belgrade, take the city, and secure that border. The Americans had so far been quiet, and not surprisingly so. They were allowing the Aztec to do the dirty work for them. They were very manipulative, and the Aztec, realizing that they had been had, broke off their initial thrust towards Grand River, which was costing them so much manpower. It seemed inevitable that the Americans would step in and begin their own assault. Before that could happen, Hiawatha was determined to take Belgrade. If they had one more city, they could train more people to defend the Iroquois League against the Americans and the Aztec. And, he had a feeling, soon the British and Siamese as well. It seemed there was a vast confederacy of invaders bent on taking the land from its rightful owners. The British, right on cue, denounced the Iroquois and Siam attempted to forge a treaty with the Iroquois, but Hiawatha was too suspicious. Dekanawide urged him to accept, but Hiawatha refused, saying that the Siamese could be trusted no more than any of the other foreigners. They would surely betray them, as had all the others. It was at this time that the people of the Mohawk Nation, the strongest warrior nation of the tribes, put forward a new training regimen and created a new weapon for the soldiers to use a powerful hatchet made of the metals taken from the below the earth. These Mohawk warriors were few, but they were greatly powerful, and it was they who would turn the tide of the war. Until next time, all the best. <laughs>